All right, good afternoon, YouTube. In today's video, we are going to be discussing a hypertrophy fundamental. So I've been borrowing these ideas from my friend over at Basement Bodybuilding and been learning a lot from himself and also many other people that I've been able to have the honor and privilege of talking to. So today we're going to be talking about uh, the hypertrophy fundamental of proximity to failure and volume. The reason why I decided to put them together is because in my opinion, you can't have one without the other. And I mean, this applies to all of the fundamental principles as they do compound on top of each other to result in better size gains. But these two, even more so. If you are not training sufficiently hard, and if you are not accumulating enough volume, it doesn't really matter what you're going to be doing. Obviously, everything works because working out works. But if you want to maximize things, you need to be intelligent with your training. And that's what we're going to be going over today. And those are points that I will be touching on throughout this presentation. So let's get into it. So let's make that a little bigger. How about bigger? All right, there we go. So here's what we're going to talk about. First and foremost, oftentimes you might hear volume is the main driver of hypertrophy. This line of logic is very similar to the just do this fallacy. We hear this a lot from a wide variety of people. Powerlifters will just say, um, just get stronger, just get just squat bench deadlift. Uh, people who think that they don't need to learn how to fight because they carry a screwdriver will say, I'll just poke this guy really, really hard. And those aren't really good recommendations, right? Anytime that you try to isolate or make a single universal answer for a complex question, you have to take more and more leaps of faith. These are not, this is not recommended for a lot of different things because we do have a series of correct, valuable, and valuable right answers. We know practically how to get bigger, get stronger, right? While we might not necessarily understand the full science underneath it, when it comes to actually coaching people, when it comes to making recommendations, we have got that shit pretty much figured out, right? It's important to understand that with this, just as much with any other thing, one answer is not the right answer answer just get stronger just squat bench deadlift and you'll get big bro or just do a lot of volume because volume is the main driver of hypertrophy are all leaps of faith in the wrong direction you suspend your reasoning every single time that you believe these lines of logic and it's important to remember leave to faith what only faith can answer and with everything else rely on inferences to the best explanation we have been getting more intelligent with how to get bigger how to get stronger how to build muscle for the past 50, 60, let's see, we're in 2020 now, so probably closer to 80 years, right? We've been doing a much better job about going about it, so our methods are much more intelligent than what one answer can give you. So the next point I want to make is that everything works. Obviously, there everything works. The reason why I want to make this point is because it's not uncommon for people to say, well, it worked for this guy or it worked well for him. And it's like, yeah, it worked because working out causes muscle growth. Working out causes you to get bigger. If you if you put in work, something will happen as a result. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction or whatever that thing goes. I didn't really pay attention that much in that particular um, science class. But that is the basic thing. Yes, obviously everything works, but here's the thing. If you want to get more out of your consistency and effort, which are the two most basic fundamental principles, because those are the things that will actually garner results in the end, in the final analysis. If you want to get more out of those two variables, you need to train more intelligently. And how do you do that? You include everything that I'm about to discuss with you today. The driver of hypertrophy is proximity to failure, and volume. Now, the other fundamentals are incredibly important, and I've made other videos discussing them, but when it comes to those two variables, being exercise selection or frequency, I feel like it's okay to kind of have a separate discussion between the two, for one, so that way I can actually focus on this topic, but also because if you are a bodybuilder, you should have a big basic compound lift or a big or some type of lift that is targeting the muscle you're trying to train, in addition to like other isolation work that rounds out the physique. Now, with any exercise that you do, you need to make sure that you're not sacrificing proximity to failure and volume. If you are training more frequently, you're doing so because the amount of volume you need is going to be difficult to accumulate in one training session because volume 
that is accumulated when you're training close to failure is very difficult. And the needs of what you will have to get out of your training will change the bigger and stronger you get. So let's talk about this, right? Proximity to failure. First and foremost, I do think that an appropriate word to put in this slot would be progression. I think progression is a, another word that we can put into this slot, but here's the issue and here's the problem, which is why I think it's they are not necessarily synonymous, but they are in, intrinsically linked. For you to progress, you will need to work closer to failure. The very nature of you progressing means that your point of failure, the point at which you would fail on a lift with a certain amount of weight will change the bigger and stronger you get. Failure is a moving target and it gets further and further away the bigger and stronger you get. As a result, progression can happen kind of automatically if you just kind of do an auto-regulated approach, do a rep goal system, which is one of the one of my favorite ways to um is one of my favorite ways to kind of go about hypertrophy training. Those are all viable and valuable methods. But at the end of the day, if you look at any progression out there, right, the idea behind it is that you are going to be um, pushing closer to failure as a result of you doing this, right? Maybe there, like, there's more than likely some exceptions that I'm going out, like, that are bypassing my brain right now, but the spirit is still remains the same. The next portion, volume, right? If you compare one hard set, three hard sets, or five hard sets, more is generally better. Obviously, there's a point of diminishing returns, but three will almost always be better than one if both if whether if you're going to failure on one set or three sets, three will be better. Five, same thing kind of happens. Like I said, that point of diminishing returns does in fact exist, and that's worth noting. However, one set is very clearly not the right answer. All but this is important to point out because all the volume in the world will not help you if you aren't training sufficiently hard. And this kind of in enters us into the next part of the discussion, which is what does training sufficiently hard even mean? Giggity. So first and foremost, close to failure, proximity to failure does not mean training to failure. You don't actually need to tr fail every single time you go to the gym. You don't actually need to fail every single set. You don't really get anything too much out of it, especially if you are more strength focused. But if you are training more so for hypertrophy, proximity to failure really just means are you are your sets hard enough? Giggity. Are you in that zero to four reps in reserve range, right? And while I do think that RIR is a useful tool in some scenarios, I do think it's one of those tools that oftentimes gets misapplied to most amount of people because they simply don't know how much reps and reserve they really have. I do recommend that if you um, are thinking that a certain set is a certain uh, reps in reserve amount, ask someone to spot you, maybe a friend, maybe a workout partner, or just um, someone else in the gym. We're friendly, right? Ask them to spot you and test that theory out. If at the end of a set, you say to yourself, all right, that was about, um, I have about two more reps in reserve. Give that a try. Aim for three, aim for four. See if you were actually correct in assessing your own ability to do your reps in reserve. If you are pretty good at doing so, yes. If you are training in that zero to four reps in reserve range, those are hard enough sets that will push progression, push um, hypertrophy stimulus, and that's fine. Another way of going about things, which is a much more simple, but a very, very effective way, and one that I think most people can benefit from because it teaches you how to manage training intensely enough, but also training with enough volume is the rep goal system by Steve Shaw. Three to four sets of as many quality reps as possible, stopping the set when your technique breaks down or when you're one rep shy of failure, and then continue to go off from there. Now, there are a lot of ways to accomplish training sufficiently hard, whether it be with more volume, whether it be more, more intensity. At the end of the day, the difficulty of the training is kind of the thing that we're talking about or aiming at here. But there are some indicators that will kind of occur as a result of this happening. First and foremost is rep drop-off. The reason why rep ranges are so useful, um, especially if you're running something like a double dynamic progression or something of that nature, is the fact that if you do a 12 rep max, by its very nature, you will not be able to do a second set of that after two, three minutes you should notice either a significant increase in difficulty or a substantial decrease in reps. You know, one or the other, 
Probably both. More than likely both. Most definitely both, unless you're like a genetic freak who just is strong as hell. Likely not going to happen. But I do throw that out there just because there's always going to be the guy like, what about this scenario? All right. So, see, I care about you guys too. I just want like, we're helping everyone here. So, you should observe some type of rep drop off. Ways that you can kind of modify this or accommodate to this is that you decrease load each set, each subsequent set after that rep max. And that'll still, and that to help you drive volume. But let's say you're using straight weight for all four sets, all three, four sets, maybe three to five sets. If you are pushing close to failure on each one, you should notice a rep drop off over time, over the course of the workout, over the course of the number of sets that you're doing. The next thing you should notice is a pump. If you are not noticing a pump from your training, there is a big issue there. First and foremost, um, the pump, while it's not a driver of hypertrophy, it's definitely a feature. It's definitely, um, the way I would put it is like, let's say, you know, going with a driver analogy, right? Like think of a car. Um, yes, a car with an engine can get you from point A to point B, but would you want to drive a car without an AC? Probably not. The pump is kind of like the AC. Maybe. I think that's a, um, it's an analogy I haven't really thought of yet, but it's kind of to give you that point of it's necessary, it's needed. You probably, you don't want to drive a car with no AC. Um, if you are training a sufficient amount of volume, you should feel the muscles actually being, you know, stimulated. And how, how will you feel that? You get a pump. The next thing, and this is the most overrated aspect of it, is uh, rep speed drop off, like decline in rep speed. So your reps slowing down. Some people have a substantially greater ability to grind through reps than you would think. So basing your proximity to failure solely on your rep speed is largely overrated, but it's still a factor. It still does occur, um, but it's not the biggest one. I just, like I said, wanted to put that out there. But those are some ways that you can kind of think to yourself, am I training hard enough? And if those things are present, the answer, should, the answer is most likely yes. Uh, anyway. So now we get into the issue of volume without intensity and intensity without volume. This is very similar to the problem of consistency without effort and effort without consistency. If you are consistent, but you are consistent in all the wrong ways or in a way that's just incredibly ineffective, you're not gonna be getting much out of it. Are you gonna get something out of it? Yeah, sure. Like I said, working out works, but are you going to be getting your actual goal and intended outcome from it? No. And let's say you have someone who is able to do the perfect workout, push himself perfectly, but he only shows up once a month. Still not going to make much gains. So one will produce results because everything works, but both will produce results better. It's okay to have more than one answer needed for your problems, for your solutions. So... Here is um, what is needed, nuance, right? Now, when it comes to volume without intensity and intensity without volume, it is important to also point out that both are effective. Whether if you, uh, while it is possible to train too light and train too heavy, training with high volumes or high intensities are both effective ways to train. But they're both very much inefficient. While they can produce results, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be what's going to produce the most results for you. So don't think that you can just hike up your volume so much and you're going to be getting like massive gains. And in, and in the opposite to that, don't think that you can just hike up intensity so much that you don't need to do volume. You need both. You can't replace the other by doing more of that one thing. You can't make a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich by adding more peanut butter to replace the jelly, okay? I think that's an okay uh, analogy there. You can tell I'm hungry and kind of fat by that analogy, but whatever, we're moving forward. So eight to 10 sets is a good starting point for the effective number of sets for hypertrophy, in my opinion. Obviously you can go lower and get good results from your training. Like let's say if you're doing like, you know, basic um, five by five, three by five, those kinds of, you know, novice strength programs that aren't the best for hypertrophy, you're still going to grow from them for sure because you're a novice and you don't really need that much to grow. But let's say you are taking your hypertrophy goals more seriously. Most definitely eight to 10 is a good minimum place or a good starting point to kind of go from. And I think it's important to say starting point rather than the minimum 
because you know in there in most people's minds when they hear minimum right they'll think oh this is the minimum effective volume therefore it's minimally effective no it's the starting point of volume where you can go up go down as needed to find what's going to be useful to you and let's say eight to ten sets is enough to get you growing get you progressing adding more volume on top of that when appropriate will have a better result than just starting too high all right so next thing i want to talk about is that fundamental training principles do depend on one another you like i said you can't just replace one without the other you can't just have have anything taken out of it right so i've made this little graph here and at the point at the top of it i put literally everything else um i think something that i could have been a bit more uh something i could have done better is instead of putting literally everything else i should have just put like you getting your <laughs> the results you want if you are watching my channel if you are watching my videos you likely want to have either a better physique um better strength outcomes and or some mix in between right how do you accomplish that this is how you accomplish that first and foremost get your consistency and effort dialed in right then incorporate the necessary principles and fundamental principles of strength and hypertrophy training because both are going to be necessary right and then that's how you get to your finalized self-actualized in like end state goal right so you need to be both intense meaning close to failure and you need to have volume now here are some practical considerations for intensity right first and foremost ask yourself how intense do you like to train i know people who don't like pushing close to failure, but they still want to get results. And should I tell them, well, you're shit out of luck, buddy. You got to push to failure and go all out, brother. Um, no, <laughs> like usually when I encounter those clients, they tend to be, um, you know, middle-aged, has a, have a family, has, is a mom, you know, working professional and whatnot. And they want to be fit. They want to do this and, and whatnot, but they don't necessarily want to like push to the nth degree every single time they go to the gym. And that's fine. How do you adjust and modify your training for a person training like that? How do you modify your intensity and volume? What's a sufficient amount of intensity that they can tolerate? And what's an appropriate amount of volume that matches that? That's what you want to consider. Then you ask yourself, are you doing an appropriate amount of volume for the intensity of how you train? So what I just touched on right there. If you are not progressing, you need to assess whether or not it's an issue of intensity or volume. Or if, or if you can solve one problem with the other, but both are still going to be important um, necessary factors that you need to put in. And finally, is the amount of intensity that I am doing getting in the way of accumulating enough volume to push progression? This often happens with people who are more likely to want to push to the nth degree all the time, who want to go for rep maxes all the time. If you are unable to accumulate enough volume to push progression, you are shooting yourself in the foot. If you like to train heavy, there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to make sure that you're putting it at the appropriate time. You can't train heavy all the time. You can't go from harder to harder training all the time. And if you are just constantly putting yourself into a compromised position because of your preferences, then no one will really feel bad if you don't reach your results. At the end of the day, yes, your training should be um, cater to you to maximize your consistency and effort. But every now and then you, every now and then you will need to make a educated sacrifice to keep progressing, to keep moving towards your goal. If you become too attached to what you want, and as a result, you have to sacrifice what is needed to continue to move forward. That's where you kind of need to assess things. And that usually, like I said, comes from people who love intensity so much that they're not willing to do more volume. So my power lifter, power builder bros out there, this is a good um, learning po um, point for you. Yes, lifting heavy is fun. And you can still most definitely lift heavy if you are pursuing bodybuilding goals. But if you have bodybuilding goals and all you want to do is lift heavy, you're probably going to run into a lot of more issues than you would if you just decided to dial things back and do things a bit more appropriate for your goals at that point in time. You can always go back to heavier and heavier training. Here are some other practical recommendations. So if you are new, first and foremost, I want you to focus on big basic compounds for each of your muscles. So your legs, your so your quads, your hamstrings, your chest, your back, your traps, 
um, your lats, your biceps, triceps, everything deserves its own main movement in your program if you are training for hypertrophy, right? That's that exercise um, selection and variety um, fundamental. Next is I want you to get stronger in moderate rep ranges. So lifting intensely in moderate rep ranges, doing three to five sets of five to 10 reps. That's a very good place to start out with. You can go up from that, you know, that eight to 12 range is another great place to go. And then of course have isolation exercises to continue to get more volume. If you are using lighter weights and you are being further from failure per set, I would recommend decreasing the amount of rest time you take and increasing the total number of sets. So increasing the density of the workout. If you are using heavier weights, then I recommend, you know, training a bit more conventionally, a bit more um, to tr traditionally, I guess you could say, where you have longer rest times and you are more moderate with your sets. So it just kind of depends on what you need, what you want, your client, you as a person, you as a lifter, and just going from there. So in conclusion, proximity to failure or progression, whichever word you want to use, combined with volume is the driver of hypertrophy. The right amount of work depends on you, on how you want to train, and that will change over time depending on your goals, your needs, your wants, and who you become as a person, right? Another thing that I want to kind of add on here is that the right amount of work rarely feels like the right amount of work. So keep that in mind also. You might think that you need to be pushing yourself so much that you can't recover um, and you just beat yourself down so much when really what you need is to dial it back a bit or vice versa. You might think that this is the amount of volume that you need to continue making progress, but you're progressing so incredibly slowly that it's... Um, becoming too monotonous and then you are starting to feel like you're not being rewarded for your training. So increasing the dose might be a viable option. To optimize your training, you choose what you will be the most consistent with and be able to apply the most amount of effort to. But to maximize your training, you need to make intelligent decisions factoring your wants, needs, and current status. So that's it for this video today. If you would like to work with me at, for coaching, for custom workout programs, um, all that is in the link in the description below. If you have any topics that you would want me to cover, leave me a comment. Um, also, if you would like to support the brand, support the channel, then you can follow me on Instagram. You can um, buy merch from my store or you can support me on Patreon, all of which would be greatly appreciated by me. I do Deeply appreciate everyone for tuning in, watching the videos, um, being subscribed to the channel. I'm gr very grateful for everyone being a part of this channel and this community. So leave your thoughts, your comments, your questions, and anything else in this comment box below. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.